Hey y'all, Trisha Stetzel here, and I serve those who are serving others. So welcome to this week's episode of Serving the Community podcast. I created this podcast to highlight people and organizations in our own communities who are serving others and giving back to make our communities, our country, and sometimes even the world a kinder place to live. Serving doesn't just make your heart feel good. You probably heard that some studies have shown that there are mental and physical health benefits to serving, like reducing depression, lowering blood pressure, and even lengthening your lifespan. Putting other people's needs before yours also strengthens your relationships. It connects you with the ones you are serving. And if that someone is someone you know, it creates a stronger bond with them. Serving also enriches other people's lives. And perhaps the best benefit of serving is the chance that person paying it forward. If you help someone, they're more likely to do something nice for someone else that day. Your one act of kindness could have a major domino effect. It's like the pebble on the pond creating that ripple effect. Now, it's time to talk to our amazing giver this week. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Serving the Community Podcast. I'm super excited about the guests that I have on today. We're exchanging podcasts, even. I was on the show recently with Javon, and then he is on the show with me today. So Javon Wooden is a dynamic business growth strategist and coach, speaker, author, podcast host, and Bronze Star recipient. He's passionate about leadership, business strategy, effective communication, marketing technology, and helping motivated individuals and businesses achieve their goals. Javon, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Tricia. I was looking forward to this. (laughs) <laughs> I know. I'm so excited. Uh, first, I want to thank you for your service. So Javon is a also a military veteran, and I appreciate you serving our country and now serving the community. So let's talk about the amazing things that you're doing in your business. How did you actually get there from where you came? Well, first and foremost, thank you for your service as well. Really appreciate that in, in the service you're doing in the community starting with this lovely podcast. Um, So as far as getting where I am in business, it really happened. um, It was it was a journey. (laughs) And I learned a lot along the way. And and, uh, a lot of that came from the military. Um, The military was really my first foray into seeing what I was capable of. I come from Rochester, New York, very humble beginnings. Uh, and I got into a, some trouble while I was younger. So I realized that I didn't want to keep getting into trouble. Um, when I was younger, I was faced seven years in prison. And by the grace of God, I didn't have to do that time. Uh, he said that there was another way and that I could actually serve using my heart and mind. Uh, so that, that I kept in the back of my mind as I became an adult. Um, I really represented, um, I realized that my community was my m- most important uh, purpose. Um, just giving back and especially to people who had struggled with similar struggles such as I, um, which is why now with Bright Mind Consulting Group, one of my uh, my real mission is to help one million black owned minority women, veteran BIPOC businesses generate a le- legacy that is, includes generational wealth. I love that. And we'll so, talk about that later. Yeah, I want to dig into <laughs> that, but not yet. But not yet. Thank you for being vulnerable and sharing that story. I think that there are people out there that would really resonate with, oh my gosh, you're such a superstar and you do all of these things, but you had very humble beginnings. And I think it's important for all of us to share those stories. We all didn't just, we weren't just born in success. We weren't just born into these positions. We actually worked really hard and we learned a lot of lessons on the way. And I think it's amazing that you've been able to do the things that you do. So I know one of the areas that you like to focus on in your, or some of the areas that you like to focus on in your business is clarity, confidence, and cash flow. So talk to me a little bit about that. 
Yeah, so I, I focus on, first of all, clarity. We, we can't operate at a high level if we don't know what we're operating for and why we want to do it in the first place. So really understanding that my whole formula, five whys, comes from the play on words. I usually ask clients why three to five times. Why does it matter? Because we tend to give the root cause, the, the I mean, the surface level answers at first, right? Oh, I want to generate a lot of money. Well, why does it matter? You know, what does, what does money get you? <laughs> so, so we need the clarity on that, right? And then we can figure out the how later. Um, a lot, we're so stuck on the how, um, and we don't even know what we're going for initially. So that's why clarity. And then confidence. Confidence is moving forward in not just when things are going well, but through adversity. The confidence to say, okay, I fell, but I can begin again. Or maybe I can pivot and do it differently, right? Because we know adversity is going to come. And coming up in cybersecurity, we all, when we talk about hacks, we talk about it's not a matter of, of um, happening. It's a matter of when it happens. And that's the same thing with adversity in life, right? It's a matter of when we're going to hit that wall, when we're going to face that obstacle. So you have to have the confidence to say, you know what? I really want this. And whatever comes my way is not going to stop me from achieving it, right? And also the confidence to say, you know what? Maybe that goal doesn't matter anymore. Maybe I thought that was my goal, but I need to pivot. So we need the confidence to be able to make those key decisions, right? Um, and, and live with the consequences of those key decisions, whatever that is, because we don't control outcomes. Um, and then cash flow. That's the lifeblood of our business, right? If we're not generating income, we won't be confidence and clarity is all for not. It doesn't matter, right? So we have to make sure those things are leading to money and not just money money to survive, um, but also to thrive and allow that uh, business to become sustainable, be scalable and be flexible um, to weather the storms such as economic times that we faced over the, the past decade or so. Yeah, absolutely. Clarity, confidence and cash flow. And pulling that back to what you said before about being there for those 1 million minority owned businesses and really helping them with these three things along with I'm sure others. Absolutely. In the face of adversity, how do you, so you in your story, the very short story that you were able to give in that face of adversity, you said, you know what, there's something here. I have an opportunity to go this direction or this direction in this face of adversity. And I chose this direction Thinking back on that or even thinking forward and people who might be listening today, how do you how do you find that decision? What is it that makes you choose the path that you're going to lead or follow in the face of adversity? Yeah, and it we hear it all the time. Start with the end in mind. And when you know that end, that why again, it comes up time and time again, Tricia. So really knowing why I set out on that journey, uh, that's what keeps me. So when I face that adversity, I know that there's a certain path, there's values that are the foundation. So I know exactly what I stand for. I know not my non-negotiables and everything I do has to align with that. So the way I get to that goal is governed by that. Then I also know, you know, who is there for me. So I actually created my 360 degree security system, which I talk about from time to time, having people that I can lean on, whether that's my co my own coaches, whether that's my close friends, my spouse, right? You got to have some people there that can keep it real with you and you can keep it real with them um, because those are the people that's going to help you get through those times that seem insurmountable sometimes. Uh, we need that. Mm -hmm. This is you know, oftentimes we talk about how entrepreneurship is a lonely journey or success is a lonely jersey journey. Like your quote says, and whoever can see it, it says success is best when it is shared. So that means that we have to have people there or else the success will mean nothing. Right. We will feel empty. So remind yourself of your purpose. Remind yourself of what you're willing to give, but also what you're willing to give up for your definition of success. And then you got to make sure that you have that value, the foundational value that says, you know what, this goal means everything to me and I'm going mm -hmm. to do it from hell to high water to get it as long as it's within my boundaries of what I, what my values are. I love that. Starting with values and then you attract people that have like values and that's where the business comes from because it's so meaningful. And oh, by the way, as entrepreneurs, our business 
our businesses are often our lives, right? We're doing something that we're so passionate about. Thank you for sharing that. I want to talk about this 360 security thing because it really caught my interest. I was like, <laughs> what? I talk about who's in your room all the time, but I love how you called it your 360 security and the people that you allow in that space or you invite into that space to really help you grow. They're yes. bigger, better, faster, stronger, and supportive of you. I'm just guessing. How did you come up with this idea of this 360 security? Yeah. So as you know, Trisha, we talk about this often in the military, right? 360 degrees of security, but it's in a different context. But for me, I use that for my support system, right? It starts with me. I'm zero, zero meters, right? So I'm the center of that point. So I need to make sure that I am being honest, being vulnerable, being allowing them to support me. Then I can go out to that first level. And those are my closest. That's my inner circle, as we want to call it. And those are people I can talk intimately about some things that maybe the public don't need to know. Um, and then I have the second level. The second level are people who are close to me. Maybe they're, they're friend groups right, for certain things, but I'm not necessarily going to tell them my deepest, darkest secrets. Um, and then I have that third level. Those are typically my virtual mentors, as I like to call them. People who may not even know me, but they have inspired me in some shape, way, or form. Um, people who have done things that I would like to do, that I aspire to do, um, or people who have stood on things things, maybe their values align and, and it kind of influences the way I make my choices and decisions. So that's really it in a nutshell, what the 360 degree support system is. Um, and that's, I, I use that now. Like I want to be a part of those million businesses support system, whatever that is, um, which is why I joined organizations like Verizon, Small Business Digital Ready and all these other ones, because that's where my people are. Right. I may not be able, they may not be able to afford my services. So I had to find other ways where I can get involved in the communities um, and still serve at a high level so I can get them to one day maybe be able to make those six and seven, eight figures. Yeah. Let's dig into that a little more. See, so you knew because you're, you host a podcast. You're like, I'm going to drive us to this I'm conversation gonna, gonna that we're, really, we're going to go there. Right. Uh, and <laughs> before we go there, I want to say you've been inspired and now you're inspiring others. And I think that is amazing and inspiring others in the community to find that clarity, to create that confidence and then moving into that cash flow as entrepreneurs. So let's talk about this mission that you're on to help 1 million minority owned businesses. Tell me more about it. Yeah, I mean, it's near and dear. Um, and it really came from when I first started my business. Um, you know, I was going through some tough times coming back from Afghanistan. Um, and I was looking for a therapist, looking for a coach. And I didn't see many people who looked like me. Um, so it really started there. But then I, as I got deeper into business, I also realized that there were other marginalized communities or underrepresented demographics that needed that same support. Right. Um, as we look at executive ladders and hierarchical systems of of organizations, what do we typically see? You know, we see older white guys. So there has to be a way for um, other people because diversity is not just. Uh, something we talk about is not just a buzzword. It, it's something that also fosters innovation and fosters elevation for all. Uh, so we need to have this diverse ecosystem and ec economy. Um, so that's why it's just so important for me to do this because yes, I want people to look like me, but I also want uh, the world to be better um, as a whole. And I want us to create you know, this this environment that I know it could be. I'm not going to call it a euphoric society, but I know that we can create one of collaboration over competition. Um, and, and I've seen it time and time again. So why not be a catalyst for that change? Yeah, absolutely. So if someone were looking to make changes with you, they want to ride alongside, they want to be a client or they want to participate in something that you're doing, what is the best way for folks to find you? LinkedIn. Um, if you just search my name, Javon Wooden on LinkedIn, connect with me, shoot me a message. I would be happy to have a conversation with you to see if there's some synergy there. Um, whether you just want to say hello or you want to work business, I'm, I'm open to talking with you. And yes, it is me responding to you. <laughs> Everyone likes to hear that, right? They're yeah, not, it's yeah, not, it's a not, bot. It's not a bot. I love it. I would love to give a plug for your podcast as well. Will you tell us or tell the listeners about your podcast and who you have on that show and who that is meant for? 
Absolutely. Uh, Design Your Life and Business, the podcast for leaders. Uh, we really delve into various personal and business development topics. Uh, so I have a lot of experts, a lot of business leaders and creatives on there to talk about all of the stuff that, that um, being a leader encompasses. And I want to make this distinction. Being a leader does not mean you're in this key decision making position. We are all leaders in some way, shape, or form, you are the leader of your life. So go ahead and take a listen. Um, and we have someone for everyone, right? We've had people talk about SEO. We've had people talking about uh, mindfulness-based stress reduction. So we we have a gamut of topics. And maybe even EQ and PQ and, maybe and EQ, IQ. Yeah, just recently, <laughs> exactly. Trisha talked about the EQ and PQ and all that greatness of emotional intelligence. So definitely check that one out. Yeah, thank you very much. I really appreciate you being on the show today. So before we close, I would love if you would share one story that is really changed, a story of a client or someone that you've engaged with, you don't have to tell us their name, but who you really feel like um, has not, you've impacted them, not only impacted them, but they've impacted you as well. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, it's it was, a year ago now, but she's still one of my favorites. I work with an educational consultant whose mission was to really, we're going to call them at hope kids. You know, we call them at risk kids um, in, in society, but we want to change that narrative. Um, she worked with at risk kids or at hope youth to give them a shot at college and to be something more. Um, and she was really struggling in her business. She was a teacher in the past. She was running this business as an educational consultant for about five years before she found me. Um, and she was ready to shut her doors. Um, she, she loved what she did, but she was generating no cash flow. Right. We talked about the clarity, confidence, and cash flow. She was generating no cash flow, which impacted her confidence, which impacted the clarity on how she was going to do anything, right? How she was even going to stay open for another month. Um, so she impacted me because once we were able to get that clarity and get her some contracts, you know, where she was able to to thrive in business now, um, she impacted me because of that mission. Um, and that kind of ties into my mission and, and what I wanted to do. Um, and she just so vehemently supported um, the cause. She was willing to do whatever it took. And one of the reasons why she wasn't generating money was because she was doing so many things for free. Um, so that that was something that that resonated. We we always asked, like, what would you do even if you didn't get paid? That was her what she did, even though she wasn't getting paid. But we had to change that so she can provide. We got it. We got a quick note. We have to make sure that. We're getting paid so we can grow our impact. That's the key. We we got to make sure we understand that we can make a dollar in the difference. So I just want to leave your audience with that. Oh, I love that. You can make a dollar and a difference. And oh. it's absolutely true. We can't take our mission forward if we're not asking for money for our services. There is a lot of give back. You give back. I give back. We all give back in certain ways, but we can't give everything away. Otherwise we can't carry our own mission forward to support those who are looking for the support. Right. Absolutely. Uh, I think it's really important. Good. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being on the show today. I really enjoyed our conversation for those of you who are listening as usual. I'll have all uh, Javon's contact information in the show notes below. So you can just click and find him on LinkedIn or even go directly to his podcast, which I hope you will take advantage of. So Javon, again, thank you for being on today. Thank you so much, Trisha. It was fun. Thank you for having me. And that concludes this week's podcast, Serving the Community. Thanks so much for listening today. There are so many great things about our modern world, but the people in it should be at the top of that list. Taking a genuine interest in your family, friends, neighbors, and even strangers is one of the most rewarding decisions you can make for yourself and those around you that you choose to serve. If you enjoyed this episode of Serving the Community, be sure to subscribe so that you're notified when a new episode is posted. Please rate and review this episode and be sure to share with your connections. You can also find out more about what I'm up to at trishastutzel.com.